Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look At Out There Somewhere. This is a space shooter mixed with a puzzle platformer. A little bit more on the puzzle platformer side, but it's kind of cool how it's got a little bit of the genre blending in there. And you'll see that right as we get started here. Uh, coming out on Steam this week, it is another one of those games that is a store page, but not necessarily a price yet. Uh, but there is a pre-order page on Desura that says it's $6, so I believe... That this will be in the five to ten dollar range when it comes out on Steam. I don't necessarily have a hundred percent familiarity with that or no, foreknowledge of that. I should say. What I will say is that apparently this game is you know six months old or so. Uh, it came out originally, then it's uh, made its way through the green light process, and now it is available. So a lot of people are already familiar with this game. Uh, it's been in some bundles and and whatnot. But in any case, we're gonna get started. As you can see, I played about forty minutes of it so far, uh, which according to people that I've read online is maybe close to halfway through the game. I've heard. That it's about an hour, an hour and a half long. Keep that in mind when you get started here. As much as I like the game, it is uh, something that strikes me as a very short product, and it is a little bit of a one-trick pony once we get into the platforming, but the trick is uh, kind of interesting. So it's 20XX, we're on Mother Planet, um, humanity is in peril, Captain, someone set us up the bomb, we have received a strange signal, Grigory is attacking us again, we must fight back, call Yuri now. Uh, the screen flicker's a little distracting, but I do like the storytelling uh, style here. My spaceship is ready! Let's do this! Alright, so it starts out being a, uh, a space shooter, and this is, it was a disorienting moment for me, because I looked at the screenshots when I was requesting a press copy of this, because I am done requesting press copies for simulators that are not very good, uh, and I want to make sure that it looks like it's maybe at least a little bit up my alley before I get started, and not just, you know, ride them low, for example. Oh, don't get hit as much as I've been getting hit. Um, and when I started it, I was like, oh, is this actually just like a space shooter? Am I a total idiot? Did I get this confused with something else? No, it just starts, oh my god, the dodging. The awful, awful dodging. Um, it starts out being a, uh, a space shooter, and it's kind of a cool narrative device, because basically, you know, we're, we're flying high above the planets right here. Uh, we're gonna have, like, a Mega Man X-style boss fight against a, uh, an enemy who is basically unbeatable. That's why I say Mega Man X-style boss fight, you know, when you first fight, uh, the, the second tier boss in that game, not Sigma, the other one, I've forgotten the name now. Um, you actually just can't succeed, that's pretty much what we've got going on here as well, and yes, I am totally spoiling it. So, we'll aim in the space shooter mechanics, they're, they're fine so far. The game heavily alludes that um, there will be like yet another battle at the end of the game once you actually collect all the spaceship parts needed uh, to, to go back up to the surface. Because basically what you've got to do is wound this ship, and if you do manage to wound it, not to mention it fires those rockets that are very similar to the ones that are fired out in uh, Mega Man X as well. But uh, I, I don't believe there's any chance to survive here, so we might as well just pilot ourselves directly into the laser. System alert! Hull integrity compromised. Yuri to Mother Planet. My spaceship is severely damaged. Grigory is no longer attacking Mother Planet. He's now landing on a nearby planet. I'll follow him. Alright, so we're just gonna skip through a little bit of the story here. Now that we land, uh, we will experience the actual uh, majority of the mechanics in this game. So this is a puzzle platformer, and we have a gun. It's not Portal, but it is a little bit like a 2D Portal, uh, probably heavily inspired by it. Um, because we have a gun that is basically a teleporter gun. Using this teleporter gun is very simple. We can use it to do things like that, for example. Uh, teleport ourselves uh, to wherever the, the beam actually lands, and we can also uh, make good use of basically like abusing momentum uh, to make this work. It also is a little bit more like a VVVVVV, or not more like, but it's pretty similar to VVVVVV uh, in the sense that, you know, all the levels are relatively self-contained and they all have individual names as well. It's not necessarily non-linear, nor is it necessarily a Metroidvania, but there are some small, but not necessarily superficial elements of all that coming on here. Um, just ignore all of this for a second and I will uh, just uh, tutorialize it myself because it's easier that way. Um, it's a, uh, a relatively easy game to kind of understand the mechanics of, but a relatively difficult game uh, to actually solve the puzzles in, at least in my experience, uh, through the first 43 minutes or so of the game. So I'll, I'll try to go into greater detail about how I'm actually using this here. By the way, these consoles are save points, as you might expect. So again, uh, using the X button on a 360 controller, you can use keyboard and mouse as well. And actually, I would recommend using keyboard and mouse. 360 controller support is there, but sometimes I find that my my direction pad just gets stuck. And that's not a physical controller issue, because I use this for everything. I use the 360 controller for everything I can on the PC. This is the only game that I've had uh, problems with that I can even remember, and I use it all the damn time. Um, but yes, uh, X is fire our gun. You want to avoid falling into the lava. And the momentum conserving thing that I talked about a little bit earlier was basically that, um, let me try to get a good example of it here. Alright, so if I, this is actually a terrible example, let's fall straight down and we'll figure this out. Um, 
If I jump at the same time that my ball lands, then I'll be jumping when I appear. See, notice that I'm not if I do it otherwise. Similarly, like if I'm walking to the left when I land, I'll start by walking to the left. So it's very important to almost, you know, in the same way in Portal, you would use, you know, portals to uh, bounce back and forth through them and jump higher uh, up to a certain point or start at a high point and then, you know, carry your momentum through the portal to hit a, a jump that previously looked inconceivable. That's pretty much what we've got going on here, just in a 2D plane and with without the portal. Instead, we have a gun. Uh, that teleports us. It can also shoot through glass, as you might be able to uh, imagine there. And uh, the beam is not hurt by traveling through lava, so that's a okay. Um, we want to do this. Another mechanic that you're probably noticing right now: if your uh, teleporter gun or teleporter beam has not landed by the time you die, then you die forever. You really need to stay alive while that beam is in the air. Yeah, hopefully that's a pretty good explanation of what's going on here. Now, what's our overall goal? Our overall goal is to collect uh, ship parts, and we need something called an illuminating orb, I believe. But also there are some optional ship parts that we can get that I believe will make the fight at the very end of the game uh, a little bit simpler. And I've collected uh, something like three or four of those over the course of the, the game so far, so it does make me think that I'm getting pretty darn close to the end. And again, you know, when I say that the game is an hour and a half, that's uh, hearsay, admittedly. But also, that's not necessarily an objectively terrible thing, you know, VVV, VVV is like a maybe an 80 minute game the first time you play it, and, and less every time after that. By the way, these red beams, what they do is they uh, block the teleporter beam, which I just showed off there. The captain's log is actually very helpful to teach you what's going on, but since I already know what's going on, there is no need for it. So there is some creative stuff at play here. I wonder what happens if we go left. This is usually where there will be, uh, you know, special hidden stuff. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is one of the parts, and this will explain it more in depth than I could. You found an abandoned core. You still need a light orb. Okay, so not an illuminating orb. You need a light orb to fix your ship, though. Collect all abandoned cores to make your ship stronger. Uh, again, I haven't gotten the, uh, the light orb yet, but uh, we meet people in the environment that tell us that it's not necessarily too far away as time goes on. What I will say about the game, I, my impressions should strike you um, so far as... Positive mostly, but a little bit mixed, because that's that's where I've fallen on the game so far. Um, but one of the strengths of the game is the uh, the puzzle design. It is pretty difficult. I mean, I've I've done all of this stuff before, so it, it maybe I'm making it look a little bit easier than it actually is. Um, but it is worth noting that the first time through, there were a few puzzles, and I'll, I'll mention them when we get there. A few rooms, I should say, uh, that really really uh, took it out of me. There are also some occasional problems. Um, you know, one thing that I know somebody's gonna bring up, somebody's already put it in the comments by the time you're you're listening to this, but is like, you know, DAE sick of pixel art? Yeah, I mean, you know, some people uh, have a little bit more, uh, or a little bit more or less, I should say, have a fondness for pixel art than uh, other people. I wonder if I, if I get up to the top here, if there's another spaceship part that maybe I can get. They're good at kind of couching these optional objectives uh, out there in places that are not necessarily super on the beaten path. But anyway, um... I, I still think the game looks good. I'm not tired of pixel art, but maybe that's because I grew up in an era when, you know, literally every single game was pixel art. Like, I grew up in the SNES era, it was like my formative gaming years, I suppose. So it doesn't bother me maybe as much as it bothers some people, but, um, yeah, I mean, what you see is what you get with respect to that. If you're really anal about that, you're not necessarily going to be uh, thrilled about it. These beams, uh, by the way... Cause our, they basically serve as walls that block our teleporter, which can be good, but also in some cases bad. And I know that there is some... Oh, wow, that was way easy. You know what? I was stuck on that puzzle to try to get that for so long, and I didn't get it. I didn't even think about firing my teleporter gun into the wall to get it. Instead, I just tried to make the jump, which was fucking impossible. That was so stupid of me. So it looks like we're screwed here, but there we go. I made, managed to make my way out. Let's try it again. Uh, soundtrack, I think, is pretty good. The main caveat that I would say about the game is that it is a little bit of a, a one-trick pony. Um, it's momentum. I mean, it's a two-trick pony because you've got the space shooter elements, but those have been pretty uh, rare so far. I've only had the one at the start. Um, but the, the one trick of it is the um, um, the uh, momentum conservation, basically. And it works, but uh, after you've you know seen it once, you've seen it a hundred times. There is a way out of here. There are some, like, we'll encounter some objects, by the way, that will make the game Metroidvania out a little bit and allow us to proceed, but it is fairly linear. Um, I, I would not go so far as to say it's a Metroidvania, but there are some, some moments where you can get some items that would maybe make you think that it's a Metroidvania. So I think the way to 
properly handle this is to... Yep, there you go. Once you master the conservation of uh, momentum in the game, it's not super difficult. All you gotta do is uh, figure out when to jump appropriately. But some of the rooms are still a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a tongue twister. That doesn't make any sense. A little bit of a brain twister. That makes more sense, theoretically. Um, sneak out here. So we got another one of the spaceship parts. That's three of them so far in like 12 minutes. It's pretty good. And I thought I had something else that was really important to say. Oh, you know what I was going to say? I was going to compare this to another puzzle platform that I played recently. And hopefully that video went up before this one. Uh, but if it didn't keep an eye out for it, and that was uh, Project Temporality. That, uh, that game I think has a little bit more of an interesting kind of like gimmick and, and puzzle design to it. Oh, this is how we get out of here. Uh, I wonder if we can sneak out here and maybe there's a spaceship part up here that I can get as well, or just a new area. Oh, I botched that one pretty miserably. But yeah, usually I'm not in the business of saying, you know, X game is, is better or uh, worse than Y game, but I do think that in terms of like, you know, these two relatively similar uh, projects, Project Temporality, despite being a little bit less polished around the edges, is a, a little bit more engaging in terms of, uh, a little bit more original, let's put it that way. Not that this game is completely a, a rip-off of anything else, it's just a little bit too samey versus some other, uh, you know, puzzle platformers. Although, I, you know, the games, they have more in common than you'd originally think. They, they are both kind of just like riffs on the portal formula. Anyway, can we sneak out up here? Is there anything? Oh, there is something up here. Okay, that screen flicker gets me sometimes too. Alright, so let's... Oh! I botched it miserably. I'm gonna try this again. I know this is probably really annoying people at this point, but this is a little break from the monotony for me because I actually have not done this puzzle before. Ruka, I'm gonna need you to stop attacking my t-shirt drawer, please. Thank Ruka. What are you gonna do with freaking t-shirts, you dumb cat? You can't put them on? I mean, you may actually, maybe you could now that I think about it. And we're gonna be able to land over here. Oh! I am, again, the biggest idiot. Okay, so let's try this one last time. Now we know all the traps. Okay, we're gonna have to start from over here because I'm a big dumb jerk. And we make it, and we come up here. So those blocks, they, they get crushed as soon as you step on them. So really, that's the only thing you have to watch out for at the very end there. You don't have a chance to act, usually, when you fall on them. That's also our, our only, like, way out of this area, I think. Alright. So we made it through that area after what I'm sure was a laborious moment for you. Let's continue moving on here, and we'll, we'll play a little bit more, but, uh... Really, I think I've more or less said my piece on um, the game so far. There are characters you can interact with, you know, have dialogue with. Basically, this guy's like, you gotta come down this way because the way's blocked. Which, obviously, I can just see for myself. Water does not kill you. Mostly serves as just a way to make, uh, you know, puzzles uh, a little bit more unfaily, if that makes sense. Like, rather than putting lava beneath you and having you die every single time, the water gives you a cushion that you can use to kind of escape, I guess. So, how did I solve this one? I think you gotta, like... Maybe just jump like ah, that's totally gonna work. Again, what am I gonna do? Shoot the teleporter, jump, shoot the teleporter. Totally worked. Again, fairly simplistic once you kind of figure it out, but uh, it's engaging along the way as well. You know what this kind of reminds me of beyond, um, not beyond two souls, that would be crazy, but beyond uh, the comparisons I've already made to VVV, VVV, it also reminds me a decent amount of, um, you have to win the game, which came out on Steam for free lately. I'm not one of those guys who says, you know, oh, this game is, you know, this competitor comparable game is free. Why isn't your game free as well? What I will say is that maybe, you know, you have to win the game is uh, uh, an experience that I enjoyed a little bit more. It's weird to me to say this because I'm not actually negative at all about the experience that I've had with Out There Somewhere. I actually think it's pretty darn good. I'm trying to figure. Ah, there we go. Um, that being said, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit of this 2D platformer fatigue is setting in again. There haven't been as many this year as there have been recently, but I think this is a, a cute game. I, it's a small game, again, for better or for worse, and uh, I don't know, it comes in somewhere around middle of the pack for me. But I do think that people are, that are fans of this game, or fans of this kind of game, will enjoy it. Obviously, people who are fans of this game will enjoy it, how could they not? Um, I think we can stand back here and maybe get up to some, some business. We try like, oh, okay. I made this once before, so I'm, I'm sure I can do it again. Yeah, there we go. And if we platform up here, there may indeed be another spaceship part or something I can get. Oh, this is actually just the way, I think. Um, there is 
Oh, this is actually where we'll encounter one of those Metroidvania E elements that I was talking about a little earlier. There is a uh, secret passage, which I just fell down here. And by falling down the secret passage, we can actually get a gun. The game is not very combat focused, and it's very difficult to kill enemies, very tedious to kill enemies with the gun, um, which is mapped to the B button or C on your keyboard if you're using the standard like XCV style. Um, but it is like a, a last resort type thing. Mostly it's just used to solve puzzles like, for example, being able to shoot rocks, which will then allow you to make progress yourself. Now I believe if I come this way, there will be some kind of, yeah, something waiting for me, I figured. So this is actually an HP upgrade. What's that achievement called? Now all I need is courage and a brain. I get it. Now we can get hit twice before dying. I actually earlier did not even notice the health bar, except when I was playing as uh, the spaceship. I just assumed that maybe you would... There is an example of the controls kind of being taken away from me. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying the, the Xbox 360, like, native controls don't totally work uh, as maybe properly as I think they should. So we want to, like, stand back here and then shoot like that. Stand back here and then... There we go. Managed to get up there. We can't actually go through that door for one reason or another. Um, but yeah, I mean... Could show off a little bit more of what goes on here, but there's not really that much more to show off. See, I'm not even pressing the controller, but I'm automatically going to the left here. Again, I know people are going to be tempted to say, like, oh, your joysticks are out of alignment or something like that. Um, I don't believe that to be the case, again, considering I use this for absolutely everything. But if it is the case, man, I'm going to use my joysticks are out of alignment whenever I suck at any game ever for the remainder of all time. So I'm kind of speeding through these puzzles here, as you might be able to see. Uh, let's just kill ourselves here. I think the way we want to get through this one is we want to, like... Ah, uh, that's not right. Obviously, like, this one blocks us, so we don't want to do anything with that. I think we want to just platform across there, conserving our momentum. The green beam is the one I wanted to introduce as well. Um, what that... Oh, that was the controller taken away from me again. It is very frustrating on the odd scenario where that actually happens. I noticed myself uh, falling backwards a little bit there again. Um, it almost... Uh, stop it! This is why I actually defaulted to using the keyboard controls, and that's not like some you know, grave injustice or something like that when you have to default to the keyboard controls, but, um, I mean, control's fine, it's just not what I'm used to, you know? Um, so I think we can just go up like that, and, uh, oh, yep, there we go, just walk me into the lava. You wanna do it again? Okay, there we go, it decided to just stop me out of the goodness of its heart. Let's try this again, um, wanna go, so we wanna go up, shoot, then we wanna conserve momentum and jump up to that one. Let's try it like this. There we go, and then that'll break that, and then that allows us to come up here. A little bit of an interesting, kind of like a multi-step puzzle there going on. Anyway, let's land here, and then we can shoot right through the glass and break apart on the ceiling. What I like about it is when uh, it puts you in situations where, like, to get to something that's very close to you, you have to go through a convoluted series of objectives. But anyway, um, this is the next thing we'll learn about is this, uh, you know, kind of mirror block, I guess you could call it, that reflects projectiles back and forth. Of course, it's actually pretty easy for us to just get through here in general. We could just, you know, shoot ourselves through with that. And then, um, wait a minute, that's not the way it's supposed to be done. What have I done? Why was this so much easier for me last time? I seriously beat this, like, without even meaning to last time, and I don't remember how I did it. Did I just, wait, did I really just go, like, uh, I probably just went like this. Shoot this, and then jump. Okay, yeah, that was actually super easy. Um, this is out there somewhere. It's a little nifty. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily going to end up on my Game of the Year list or anything like that, but I think it's alright. Again, the price is still uh, a little bit of a mystery to me, but it's somewhere between 5 and $10 based on the pre-order price on Desura at the very least. If you're a fan of games like VVV, VVV, you have to win the game. Uh, and, and you're a big fan of the uh, 2D puzzle platformer genre in general. And you don't mind uh, paying a little bit of money for a game that is uh, supposedly quite short. I think it's solid. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's solid. So you can check it out. There will be a link in the video description below to pick it up on Steam. And of course, uh, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.